but today we're going to be reviewing uh, Mayans Season 4, Episode 4, A Crow Flew By. Uh, so this was what I thought was a really good episode. Um, got a lot of, um, I don't know, just interesting stuff popping off all around, I think. Uh, still not really as advertised quite yet with the Suns uh, versus Mayans War. Uh, you know, that's been building up for like two seasons now. So uh, hopefully we get some good payoff with that. I don't know. Um, but yeah, just more, more build up and um, some interesting character um, interactions. I could see people saying this episode was maybe kind of boring, but I appreciate those episodes where there's kind of interesting stuff. Um, at least set up for more interesting stuff uh, down the line. So I got, um, but like I said, we're hopefully we'll get some payoff um, or some direction with some of these things, to be honest, because some of these things I'm like, are they just kind of, I'm glad that we get to see more of where these characters are at, but are they going to wrap around back into the main story? I'm talking about Angel's old ex-girlfriend uh, that he had the baby with, can't remember her name, or Glendo. Um, you know, Easy's girlfriend, like, uh, just some of these things. But anyway, let's get into the specifics. So Galindo, um, like I just said, he is back. Uh, it's good to see him. Um, I was not expecting him to be in this season at all. I don't think we saw anything about him in the trailers. Uh, but I'm kind of unsure what's going on with his story. I mean, I know he's in hiding now. Um, but I don't know he's doing something for some uh, uh, parade like I guess it's a Hispanic or a Mexican thing uh, Day of the Dead um, but um, I do like the interactions with him and the kid uh, because of course he has a son so you know it'll be nice to see how you know he kind of forms a father-son relationship with protecting this kid I believe because something happened to his dad or his dad's not there or people are looking for the kid's dad I believe Right, I was a little bit confused. I was like, "Wait, is he Galindo's son, or are they looking for Galindo?" But I don't think so. I think Galindo's just a nobody. But he's protecting the kid because they're looking for the kid, I believe. Um, but yeah, anyway, it, it's nice to see Galindo back. I didn't expect that. So um, yeah, because I do like the actor and uh, the character as well. Um, I think he needs to tie back in with the Reyes brothers somehow in that story. But like I said, I'm just not how, sure how all that's going to connect right now. Or anytime soon. Um, okay, and then the stuff with Easy this episode, I did like some of it. Now, this is one critique I have with the episode where I was like, eh, I don't know how I feel about that. Uh, but they bring up Jax, you know, uh, which was nice. Um, Alvarez is quoting Jax. I don't remember exactly when Jax said this, but it sounds like something he would say, right? Um, talking about uh, letting the past, don't forget about your past because then it'll repeat itself. Um, and Alvarez tells e tells Easy this and gives him a book to read so the club the club doesn't repeat itself. And this is a direct, nearly a direct rip from Sons. I'm like I, I mean this is you know Jacks always had the book that he was reading through and trying to get the club on a good track so they don't repeat themselves. And now I, I just complained last episode that we were doing some stuff with Easy that was too similar, too easy to uh, connect to something, make him just like Jacks. And uh, yeah, now we did this very blatant thing again. So with the book, uh, for the same reasons. So mostly the same reasons. And I didn't like whenever Easy had to be, you know, hey, I'm smarter than than Jax Teller because Jax was re obviously really, really smart. Uh, but Jax applied his intelligence to like street smarts, whereas Easy applies his more to uh, like book smarts. You know, I mean, he uses it for street smarts, but he's more book smart inclined um, when he was growing up is what you get the and so and so easy uh interrupts uh alvarez and like actually you know fuck Jax teller he copied you know that from this something like that right so he didn't say that exactly but that's the way it came across so i, was like, I don't know about this anyway i did really like the big uh alpha move from easy though <laughs> i love the way it, the scene was comedic when it played out uh whenever he bishop's getting drunk and drowning in his problems i don't know how he handled all that that he drank but uh anyway so um he's uh he's um talking shit to easy because easy comes up and tries to apologize like hey man i'm sorry about this i can tell it's been hard on you and he tells him you know go shove it up your ass and uh easy just slowly leans up like he's processing it and then bam punches it was a hard punch it was in the trailers too but uh 
but yeah, like the whole camera shakes. It was a, it was a hard punch, but um, uh, he does it because he's the vice president. He's like, yeah, teach him some respect, how to respect his uh, VP, you know, and uh, that's the best way to elevate to a higher point of status uh, by you know picking on the biggest guy in the room, even though. Bishop's clearly the smallest guy in the room. He's very short, but I mean like in status, you know, or how he was. So I really like that. And um, yeah, and then just more stuff with Easy this episode. Um, God, I felt so bad. It's so shitty and kind of weird, I think. I mean, I I got the kind of close bond that uh, Gabby had, uh, Easy's ex-girlfriend had with his dad. But now that his dad is kind of mailing her back and forth, it seems, and they're still talking, but Easy's not talking. You know, maybe she's holding on to see if Felipe will say, like, yeah, Easy's out of the club now, so come back and you can be with him. I don't know, but it's really weird and kind of borderline shitty. Uh, or it is shitty and then borderline weird, I think. Because Easy comes in and sees the postcard and, yeah, just, uh, he was he was coming around feeling bad for his dad, coming in to see the meat shop closed. And then, and then yeah. So, and I like, I like, I always like, especially lately I think I don't know if they had a lot of good scenes early on but Angel and Easy um, they got some good like dialogue like brotherly dialogue um, this episode last episode um, so yeah um, and then we see Alvarez gives uh, Coco a chance for redemption uh, which I do like and I'm interested to see Coco's story it looks like yet again he's taking a story off by himself um, this season kind of how we always follow Coco uh, but he's going to go and try to make things better with the Oakland MC, I believe. I could be quoting that wrong. But yeah, I try to patch things up. And then he has the chance to earn back his motorcycle. Um, so yeah, that would be nice to to see. I was thinking, I don't think Coco's, Coco's like too hot-headed and too shaky to put in this situation. However, um, if he's motivated to get his motorcycle back, then it was smart what Alvarez did here. And then some... Some other padding out that we get with the episode, we get a storyline with Creep that's been going on with him flirting with this girl, getting to know her, um, and then we also get uh, this other guy going to a birthday party with some of his old friends. I, I don't know, I don't know this character's name. I'm sorry, but birthday party uh, with some of his old buddies, and you get the sense that he was a cop or a marine or like before or something like that. Maybe I could be wrong. Uh, before he joined the MC, so little bit of uh, interesting development you gotta you gotta develop out the whole team you know sons of anarchy by the end of it you didn't just you know follow jackson uh what was his name um uh clay you know the big characters you got to love tig you got to love chibs happy even you know so um so yeah i'm glad they're fleshing out some of these other characters and then sons uh the war is a go like i said i really I wasn't thinking this was ever going to happen, but it seems like Chibs apparently uh, signed off on it. They said, I just don't think, it seems like it's going to be with a different charter than than the, uh, what are the Suns charter, the North charter, North Cali, something like that. So it seems like it's going to be not their charter, so we won't see Happy, we won't see Chibs. I think that was the plan originally, but like I said, I think these Suns actors, a lot of the close ones, um, are done with Lions because of Kurt Sutter's firing it would seem I'm not 100% on that but it doesn't seem like well it seems like happy and all of them are trickling out of the story for sure unfortunately um, and then although it's it's nice to kind of leave those characters like alone but if you're gonna do it then you do it you know do it right you might as well like it's nice to end the way that they ended in Sons and kind of a happy wondering what's going on but yeah if you're gonna bring um, all this Sons crap up and already have some of them introduced then you want to see the rest of it come to fruition you know if you already see them return in the show um, and then so that's pretty much it and then there was a with the Disney Plus um, thing so um yeah, that's pretty much it. That's all I got for this one. I uh, I did enjoy it. Um, this is season is kind of a fresh coat of paint. You can tell they're really starting to change things up. Fresh coat of paint season where things are you know much different for a lot of our characters. Find them in different places and and uh, yeah, they, most shows have a season like that where things like kind of just get like a fresh coat of paint thrown onto them. Um, so yeah, let me know what you thought of the episode. If there's anything I forget, which I usually do forget to say something. Uh, then I'll put it in the comments. So check the comments 
and um, leave a like. And thank you for watching. See you in the next one.